Live long. Somebody said it's not how long you live, but it's the quality of life that you live. Yeah, live for Jesus. We'll all die one day, don't worry. But the Bible calls it, the Bible uses several metaphors for death. One of them is sleep. Or feel like we should. Yeah, we shall all sleep. That's what it is. When you see us here, we are asleep. Problem is, when some people are sleeping, they're afraid of the darkness. We don't have to be afraid of darkness because Christ is in me. There is, uh, uh, it's all light. It's light. He is the light of the world, so don't be afraid. Your Father has got your back. We want to go to a study that we were doing, the essential ministry of the Holy Spirit. And is it true we're still at part one? Lord, help us. He convicts. This is how it. And he causes repentance, the Holy Spirit. And he gives the gospel power. And he regenerates. And all those things are just other ways of saying the same thing. Many ways. But everything starts with his mighty work of salvation, the Holy Spirit. So then going back to our text, because I'm quite sure we forgot the text by now. We're going back to our text, Galatians chapter 3. You probably don't need to turn to it, but just listen, but if you want, you can turn. Paul says, having begun in the Spirit, are you now perfected by the flesh? You started out in the Spirit. We began in the Spirit. It all started with the work of the Spirit. And we needed to be reminded again the fact that any evangelism, any world missions, any evangelism that bypasses the agencies which the Spirit uses, that is the biblical revelation about sin. Evangelism cannot bypass telling people about sin. Okay. I'm alone in the house. Evangelism cannot bypass righteousness. Evangelism cannot bypass judgment. We cannot bypass the biblical truth about repentance. We cannot bypass the biblical truth about the gospel. And it is not something the sinner can do for himself, but it's something only God can do. And all the sinner can do, Deacon is Bob, is cry out to God and beg God, Jesus, thou son of David, And beg God to do that on his behalf. So when we preach that kind of message, then we preach the truth which the Spirit of God applies. Only when we preach judgment, sin, the gospel, then the Spirit now can use to convict people. That's why we're coming back to biblical Christianity. Because we've gone too far now. We can go for years by just preaching what people want to hear. And the whole auditorium will be packed. Spinning around. God's got a blessing for you. And what we are preaching now is inspirational. So everybody's coming to be inspired. But you don't know when the last you heard. Judgment. Sin. Righteousness. God. That's, those, are the, those are the ingredients of salvation. When we preach it. Then the Holy Ghost moves. With the words to convict the sinner must hear the gospel. Amen. Then we preach the truth. Paul says having begun in the spirit. Or it doesn't mean all the time. God I've seen over the years. He'll do whatever he wants to do. You convict people. 
however he wants to do that. But I guarantee you somewhere along the line, we have to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen carefully, the message remains the same, but the methodologies change. God does not deal with everybody the same way. He does not deal with every generation the same way. That's why we must not quibble over methodology, but get the words of the Bible correct. Mm -hmm. So Paul says, having begun in the spirit, can we then be perfected by the activity of the flesh? That is what he's asking them. Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Having begun, you started in the spirit. That's the question Paul is asking. And while it relates to the specific issue going on there, are you going to go off now into some fleshly form of living? Are you going to do that? Some external, ritualistic, ceremonial kind of living. It is going to be a tragedy for us to come to church for 60 years and end up in hell. It is going to be a tragedy because somewhere along the line you were taught that coming to church makes you holy. Oh God, I'm going to say Showing up makes you righteous. Somewhere along the line you were taught they're just coming on warm benches. I told you already. The Bible says, two shall be in. Okay, let me leave that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What will be left alone? It doesn't matter how many times you come. Thank God for coming. You better have a relationship with Jesus. You better confess your sins. If we confess, that's Romans, that's Paul, our sins. If we confess the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts, that God raised him from the dead. Oh God, have mercy. That is what, and then you have to live the life. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Don't go off in some fleshly form of living. Some external ritualistic, that is what was happening then. And assume that that's necessity, that's a necessity to hang on. To your salvation. No, and to progress with God. That's why we have to have balance in the church. Nothing must be taken to its extreme. Hello. I know you fasted. That's good. But don't think fasting makes you better than anybody else. Oh God, have mercy. Don't take it to its extreme. Mm. If you do, then you are forsaking the spirit with whom you began. That's what Paul is trying to tell me. And you are now living in the flesh. And Paul calls it as a kind of bewitching. Bewitching. We need to continue in the spirit. People are not growing in Christ because they're not continuing in the spirit. They are feeling the flesh and they're starving the spirit to death. They can come and perform in church. They don't read their Bibles. I'm telling you they don't read their Bibles. It is hypocrisy to tell people read the Bible and you don't. Don't stand before no group and tell them pray, you don't pray. Don't stand before your committee and tell them love God and you have a half hearted. That's why Jesus calls it, oh you don't like this guy, don't you, don't you like him? Oh this is real good. That's why Jesus calls it the Beatitudes. He never calls it the do attitudes. What does he mean? You have to first become. Oh God, I want to. Don't you tell anybody about forgiveness until you fast. I told my sons to hold me accountable. I don't have to tell my wife that because she does. Jesus. Don't allow me to be a hypocrite. I love you, Lord. And uh, I'm not depending on church to have my own quiet time. I have my own quiet time with Jesus. I cannot survive this life if all I do is get up Sunday morning and come to church. One day it's going to catch up with you. It is going to catch up with you. Because if you don't feed your spirit, the flesh will take over. And then when certain words come out your mouth, you will want to know where it came from. It came from right inside. Because you are not feeding. Whatever you put in. You spend time with him. Or else when you talk to your spouse, you get upset. And strike. 
If you don't spend time with God, you get upset with your children and do all. But you have to spend time. I'm reading Exodus. God called those Moses unto himself. Talk with me. Hmm. We need to continue in the spirit. But here's the question. What does that mean? Let me give you a few things to start. And I probably have about um, a million. Sorry. I'll give you about 50 to 20 things that the spirit does. You ready? I won't get through them all. But you see how many I can finally somehow boil it down to. But there are a couple of things that we need to start with here. Number one. He brings us the knowledge of the communion with God. He brings us the knowledge of and communion with God. The Spirit is the one who gives us fellowship or access into fellowship with God. Not the pastor, the Spirit. He is the source of all our communion, all our fellowship. Turn to Romans chapter 8. There are a couple of passages that say this and they'll be good enough to suffice for the moment to make a point. Romans chapter 8. And that is a chapter on life in the spirit. And I would suggest to you that you couldn't study anything better than this entire chapter. To find out what it means to what? To live in the spirit. And we looked at it a little bit. I hope I think some time ago. But if we didn't, it's a good chapter to look when we're dealing with the doctrine of sanctification. Oh, that's a big word. But it's about the spirit. Verse 9, for example. And maybe we can go back to verse all the way back to the beginning of the chapter. Maybe let's go back to verse 6. The mindset on the flesh is death. The mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Good God of our city. Verse 9. You're not in the flesh but in the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Verse 11. If the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. It is in the book. Through His Spirit who dwells in you. Verse 13. If you're living according to the flesh, you must die. But if by the Spirit you are putting to death the deeds of the body, you will live. It's in the book. All who are being led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So what are we talking about here clearly? Life in the Spirit. That's what we're talking about. Life. Study the chapter. Life in the Spirit. The district has used of a district of power we were using and able to disable life in the spirit. We begin in the spirit and we live in the spirit. That doesn't mean you have to walk around now at work speaking in tongues. That's not what it means. And the boss is talking to you, you bleed the blood of Jesus. Or you don't like your husband saying over his head saying the blood of Jesus over you. What is that? That's not God, that's some other spirit. I don't know what that is. You vex with him? That's not what we mean. But look at verse 14. We begin in the spirit and we live in the spirit. We go on living in the spirit, not according to the flesh. And this is until we die. This is not a one off discipline. It's until we leave this earth, we have to continue to do it. Look, just look down to verse 14. We pick out one of the elements of this that it should be a treasure to us all. All who are being led by.
by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Wow. When you experience the direct leading of the Spirit of God in your life, that's what I told the deacon. When he called me and said, Pastor, you don't know what happened. When God is leading you directly, it lets you know you are a child of God. And he leads us in the path of God. He walks with us. He talks with us. He speaks to us differently. But he will lead you if you depend upon him. You know how many times you don't know what to do. And you call upon the name of the most high God. Father, lead me today. I don't know what I should do. I don't know what I should pray for. But I know my heart is overwhelmed. I'm in a seat. I need your help. God! God will lead you. God by his spirit will speak to you. God will say, go back to the store. Go back and you will find it. But are you listening to God? When you experience the direct leading of the spirit of God in your life, it is an affirmation that you are a true son of God. Do you hear that? That you are a true son of God. For you have not received what? A spirit of slavery. A spirit of an attitude of slavery. Leading to fear again. What you have received? The spirit of what? Adoption. As sons. By which you cry out what? The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. That we are children of God. That's how you know you're a child of God. Listen to me. That's how you know you're a child of God. And I, listen, you don't have to fuss and fret about people who don't like you in your workplace. You don't have to worry about whether you're going to lose your job or not. Oh God. If you lose your job, God allowed it to happen for a reason. You don't have to worry. Your Bible says, fret not about the worst. Yourself, you don't worry. With people who don't want you to get this, who don't want you to get that, who stand behind you and stab you in the back and smile at you in your face and pretend but behind you. Don't worry that God has a blessing for you. Ain't nobody on the face of the earth can stop God from elevating you. That's why when Joseph saw his brothers, they trembled with fear. But Joseph told them, relax. You meant it for evil. But God used that plan. Oh God. That's why I don't worry, people. You can't stop God from blessing me. Whatever God wants me to have, oh God, have mercy. I am going to have it. The only person that stops God from blessing you is you. You have to walk out from under the covering of the living God. But as long as you stay resolute, you stay put, there is nobody, doesn't matter how many meetings they have, and call your name, doesn't matter what they do, if God says you are the man or the woman for this hour, nobody Fred not forget them. Forget them. Every your job is secured in God. Do your best. Do your best. I know I'm on Facebook. My wife came over time, Doc. She's crying. Why are you crying? When your wife cries, everybody cries. Don't worry, Brother Jonathan, you're going to find out. Yeah, don't worry. When she cries, the whole house is nothing. It's not the same. He won't cry. What are you crying? See, that's why I want, I want to talk to these men. Some men are so detached from their wives emotionally that God, listen. They don't know how to support these women emotionally. Bam, bam, thank you, man. Stop that. You have to be a son. Don't worry. You have things planned for all you. Some of you are detached from your wives emotionally. You know? She's crying out for help. You are just in another world. I told somebody I'm crying, I drop every single. Church doesn't 
doesn't come first. She come. But you see, when our relationship is good, I'm going to preach better. Oh God, help us. See, when everything is flowing nice, oh, you don't sense what happens. Doesn't matter what you pretend. If things are happening, oh, people are going to know. It will come out. You will come in and hallelujah. How are you doing, my grace? Of God, we do better. But if it slip out, that's what you're going to tell. All the people who buy love is watching them. But, uh, whatever. <laughs> you can't fool us. You know. Your body language, you don't even know. They're sitting far apart. The lady keeping her eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> she looking over. Nobody looking. Eyes front. <laughs> if I'm sitting next to my wife, I want my hand on this green somewhere trying to hold. She's got to say, stop. You're in church. Stop that. You're in church. You're in church. My hand was trying to hug her. You know, amen. That's what you have to do that. Looking so sexy. Excuse me, I mean, I'll spirit feel I always got to make something. Oh, my hand's got to make something. Yes, it's like, I beg your pardon. Pray for me. Pray for me. Spirit feel. She's looking spirit feel. She's looking spirit feel. Dr. Trimble, I got up, she's crying. Ellen, she's crying. I wonder why she's crying. Pressure on the job. Afraid she's going to lose her job. Pressure. Come, you don't know what you're going through. Yes, pressure. Yeah, pressure. You have bosses. Pressure. You. Listen, sometimes God sends certain people and allow them to come your way to develop you. See, sometimes that's why I tell you when you pray, you must pray according to His will. Because sometimes you try to remove something that God says, leave it right. Yeah. Do you know Paul had a thorn in the flesh? Yes. Lord! God said, mm -mm, mm -mm. leave it right there. My grace. Yes. Sometimes you want God to remove everything. Amen. Hey, because He came to teach you something yeah, yeah, yeah. patience. Learn to talk to people better. See, put somebody, you don't want to do it voluntarily, all right. Yeah. And I said to her, your life is in the hand of God. Nobody, 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 I don't care who it is, nobody. The end result is they move here and she's still there. Oh God, I'm blessed. Nobody. nobody can stop God from blessing you. But you have to walk in the spirit. No retaliate in the flesh and use emergency language against your boss. That is not walking in the spirit. Woo. Let me finish now because it's, it's getting hot in here. This is a marvelous reality in our lives. We literally say, say what according to Roman, Abba, Father, that's basically it is a diminutive form, Papa. Daddy. In other words, it is signifying endearment. Do you understand what I mean? Because in other words, you know it so well that you I can call you Papa. Daddy. When you are having intimacy with God, he is my daddy. He's my father. The greatest name you can call your father, God in heaven, is Father. When you call him Father, oh, he has to move for you. You are saying, oh, Daddy, you don't understand. Hallelujah. Uh, my, my, my sons, it doesn't matter where I am. Oh, all of us, my children. It doesn't matter what is happening. I don't know if you like me, but they can come in at any time. Whenever I'm in that room. Why? They have an access that man sitting behind me, that's my father. And I know I can come boldly before the throne of grace and obtain, oh, Jesus. Oh, the others might be afraid, but daddy, I'm a child of God. Oh, I don't need to be in a building to call his name. I can be in my vehicle and I can call him my daddy. I can call him my papa. I can be walking the streets and say hallelujah to my God. People around you would say you're going crazy. But I believe sometimes you have to have a tinge of madness to serve Jesus. Because you talk to him in the morning, in the noontime, you could be on your bed and you're just saying hallelujah. 
Have you looked up and told his name? You're stirring the pot and you say, Glory be to God. And people might be saying, What's wrong? He's all over me and he's burning inside. I feel him in my house. I feel him in a dance. I'm driving and I'm talking to God. And people drive alongside me and they're looking at me. They're going crazy. But I wind my window down and say, I'm crazy. I'm talking to the Most High. His name is El Shaddai. El Elyon. He is the Most High. That's Daddy. Yeah, that's Daddy. Yo. You can have no other relationship like the one you have with your father. You talk with him. Have you noticed you don't have to know English to talk to him? People will judge you in all kinds of things. Church is easy, you know. People judge where you can't pray. You can't pray. But when you're with daddy, you, oh, hallelujah. You and him alone. Oh, Father, I love you so much. I love you so much. Oh, God, I worship you. There is something about talking to your father. There is something about telling him all your problems. Sharing all everything that is happening to you. Telling him all your cares. Sometimes we are on the job and we feel overwhelmed. You can slip out of your cubicle. Lock yourself in your car and call upon him. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Father. Hallelujah. Help me, Lord. Hallelujah. I've been to university. And I used to call on God. Even when you can't pass the exam or the subject. I said, oh, God. I used to remind God, I am a child of the king. You made this brain. You made my mind. Touch me, Father. Touch my thinking. I believe that you can do all. That's when you are living in the spirit. All things. All things. All things. Those living in the flesh, they trust in their skills. And in their abilities, but God, we trust you. Yes. I don't know what will happen tomorrow, but we trust you. Yes. It's a song that says, We place you. Y'all know that song? Yes. Strike it up. Close your mind. Come, sister, there we come.